Hello everyone, today's video is going to be a little different as I'm going to be reviewing some riveting true crime shows I watched this month. Before we start, may I ask you to please consider subscribing to my channel as I'm hoping to reach 1000 subscribers as soon as possible. Thank you for your support. Let's get on with the video. I have picked 5 of my favorites in no particular order. Number 1. Wild Crime Season 1 and 2 Wild Crime is a true crime anthology which sheds light on killings that happened in the various national parks and reserves around the United States. This series mainly focuses on cases that happened in remote locations and tell the story from the perspective of the investigators involved in the case and also some of the family members and friends of the victims. Each season has four episodes of around 40 odd minutes. It is not a fast watch in my opinion, but you get in-depth analysis of each case and lots of expert testimonies. We get to hear about DNA analysis, facial reconstruction, etc. So if you're looking for a quick watch where everything is explained and tied up within a single episode, this series is not it. Most interesting part of the series for me was learning about investigative arm of the National Park Services, also known as ISB. These special agents are highly trained criminal investigators who aid and in some cases lead the investigation alongside local or federal criminal investigators. This series gave me an interesting insight into how they operate and the important role they play within the national park system. I watched it on Disney+. Plus. I know season 3 is out as of November on Hulu. If you have already watched it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments. Number 2. How I Caught My Killer This 9 episode documentary follows cases where the victims left behind digital and in some cases physical footprints that led the investigators directly to their killer. Each case is unique and interesting, averaging between 40 to 50 minutes. If you are new to true crime genre and wondering where to start, I would suggest this series and the one after it. They are both fast paced but at the same time give you enough details where you feel connected to the victim without a lot of detailed forensic analysis which could at times be overwhelming. Number 3. Death in the Domes Love, laughter, friendships, betrayal. This true crime series of six college students who were tragically murdered in and around their dorms packs in a gut-wrenching punch. Most tragic part of this series are the victims, all young and were only a few months away from graduating. All of them were talented, hardworking youngsters with a bright future ahead of them. As I finished this series, I was left with a heavy feeling. Maybe it was hearing about the victims from their family's perspective and the impact these murders had on these families. Even though the murderers are caught and technically the cases are closed, there is no closure for these families. They have all lost a child and in the end it hits you hard that there is no closure for the parents. If you are ready for the emotional roller coaster, give this one a go. Number 4. God Forbid The Scandal That Brought Down a Dynasty This one is a revealing and compelling tell-all documentary told by the point of view of Giancarlo Granda, a Miami pool boy who found himself trapped in a seven-year-long affair with a much older Becky Tilly, wife and partner of a powerful evangelical leader and ex-president of Liberty University, Jerry Fowell Jr. It begins when Granda was just 20 years old and was working as a pool attendant at the Fontableau Hotel in Miami. We get to hear about his first meeting with Becky and how he was lured into an affair without realizing how powerful and influential Becky and Jerry Fowler really were. What starts as a story of a scandalous affair between Granda and Becky takes a deep dive into Jerry Fowler and his association with Liberty University, an exclusively evangelical institution famous for its, their religious beliefs. 
started by Falwell's infamous father, Jerry Falwell Sr. Granda goes into great details about how Falwell not only knew, but encouraged the affair between Granda and his wife. Even when, after a point, Granda wanted to break it off, it tells you in detail sort of power the Falwells enjoyed, especially after Jerry Falwell's support of Donald Trump's presidency, and how exactly that came to be. Did the evangelical leader really believe in Trump, or was he doing it to return a favor? Eventually, it also sheds some light into the goings-on in and around the campus at Liberty University. We are given some first-hand testimony of students, mainly female, how they were ignored, in some cases blamed, for the SA they endured on the campus. I know there is a lot more to Jerry Fowell's story, and this series probably only scratched the surface. It is still an interesting watch. You can watch it on Hulu or Disney+. Plus. Number 5. Captive Audience, A Real American Horror Story This one is about Stephen and Carrie Steiner. 1972 kidnapping and eventual 1980 return of Steven Steiner and the impact his abduction had on the entire Steiner family, especially his older brother, Carrie Steiner. This series popped up in my recommendations after I watched Wild Crime. We are introduced to Carrie Steiner in the second season of Wild Crime. We are told why he did what he did. Was it because of the neglect he endured at his family's hand after the abduction of his brother? It is not an excuse to what he did, not at all. But it was still interesting knowing what made a murderer. First two episodes are about Steven Steiner, his kidnapping, life in captivity and eventual escape. How he became a hero by rescuing a boy his kidnapper had picked out to be the next Steven. We get to hear what life was like for the family from Steven's mother and sister. This series follows his escape, media circus that followed him after, sheds some light on what he endured at the hands of his kidnapper and his tragic death in a hit-and-run case when he was just 24. Large part of Stephen's story is told from Stephen's children, mother and sister's perspective. We also get to hear from the actors who played Stephen and Carrie Steiner from the miniseries I Know My Name is Stephen and what impact that series had on the Steiner family at the time. I Know My Name is Steven is available on Amazon to rent or buy. It helps you understand the impact Steven's kidnapping had not only on his parents and siblings, but later on his own children. Third episode in the series is about Carrie Steiner. Each episode is about 40 to 50 minutes long. I watched this whole series on Disney Plus in one go. It was fascinating to watch how a tragic event changed two brothers, one a hero, another a villain. I assure you, you won't be disappointed. Have you watched any of these or all of these? Let me know in the comments below. As always, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. If you are feeling generous, you can help me out by buying me a coffee. Link is in the description below. Thank you for watching. Until next time.